Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Divorced Woman's Guide podcast. How are you doing today? I hope that you guys are easing back into the swing of things with it almost being fall. We're so close. I have an interesting and special episode to share with you guys today. Now, by the time this episode airs, it will have been a, just about two weeks ago. It would have been the five-year anniversary of the day that I asked my now ex-husband for a divorce, and later that day came to get the news from my dad that my mother was rushed to the hospital, and that's where and when they discovered her stage 3C ovarian cancer. And it was a day that clearly I will never forget. And it's been ingrained. Uh, just, I remember it like it was just yesterday. It's so ingrained in my mind. And at the same time, it is also a memory that I honestly didn't remember until I spoke with my dad. And for many obvious reasons, of course, my dad remembers that day because that was the day his entire life changed and my mother became the focus of his as well as her care. And it's interesting because what has been coming up for me around that day has been two different things. Number one, it has been that, you know, I'm really proud of myself that I've done the work and I can now be at a place in my life where I don't even remember the sad days anymore, that it's not even something that was top of mind for me. Now, granted, it was also Monday, Labor Day, and we were celebrating with friends and I was, you know, in another place all day. However, I knew the date. I knew that it was September 5th. I looked at the calendar and nothing came to mind. And I say that because I think that it is, it is something that you all get to look forward to is knowing that one day these anniversaries are just going to pass and they're not going to be conscious as they used to be, or probably as they are right now. And to me, the way that I've shifted that anniversary is that instead of, uh, instead of seeing it as a day of sadness or loss, that I choose to see it as a day that I not only stood up for myself and I stood in my power for the first time in my life, when I told my ex-husband I wanted a divorce. It was one of those very much out of body experiences where I literally was like, oh my God, who just said that? Whose voice just spoke? What just came out of my mouth? And it was the first time that I truly felt what using my voice and standing in my power felt like. And at the same time, while of course my mother's diagnosis was horrible and unexpected. And I'm grateful for the four and a half years that I got to have with her thereafter. What that also taught me is the importance of how living life now is so incredibly important, how you don't know how much time you have left and you get to live each day as though you you know, as though it were your last, I hate to say it that way, but do you want to look back on your life? Do you want other people to look back on your life and to remember you as somebody who, you know, was angry all the time, the emotions were raging and don't get me wrong. We all go through it. It is part of the stages of grief that we experience. And at the same time, there is the possibility of you going through the storm and creating the calm in the storm, not before, but during and after. And I was doing a meditation just now, actually, which is what inspired this week's episode in addition to the anniversary is I was doing a meditation and I was, you know, there were some emotions that came up uh, that, I got to process through during this meditation and the images that came to mind were really powerful. First of all, the image that came to mind was a storm, right? So I saw kind of like this storm background, but I saw the ocean and it was interesting because it wasn't like there was darkness. It wasn't bright sunshine, but it also wasn't black darkness. It was just kind of like 
like a navy blue was the water. Like you could still see the blue in the water. And I could see how, you know, my breath and, and really like I'm using the palms of my hand to just kind of show that I'm like, you know, kind of like making circles in the air of like healing the, the raging waters. And then from there, what, what came up for me was I saw an image of a horse and you guys know how, when a horse gets scared or startled, the horse goes up on its back legs and it starts neighing and going crazy. And I saw myself gently put, you know, saying easy boy and gently putting my hand right where the horse's third eye is, right? That's where you pet the horse. That's what calms down the horse. And it was so interesting to me for a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, on the retreats that I've taken my clients on, there has always been an equestrian experience because horses are known to have healing powers. And so what came to me in that moment was my ability to help you, helping my clients, helping my listeners, helping anybody who is connected to me, is helping to bring the calm during a time where you are in the fire, right? Fire is raging when you're going through divorce. Your emotions are all over the place. And what I see myself as, right, during these moments for you and for my clients is to be that calm, right? Um, I'm looking at my notes because I journaled this before I recorded this episode and after I did the meditation. And it's that I help my clients and I show them how to convert the rage, convert the fire to convert the, the, the fire that of emotions, right. That are inside. I help them to convert that into a power that enables them to create calm during these tumultuous times. And it's so common that this happens at any given moment, right? We never know when we're going to get triggered. If you're thinking about divorce, you know, if you're in it, if you're on the other side, there's always a moment where you just feel like instantaneous anger or rage or whatever the, the negative fire emotion is. And what's important is having the ability to be able to bring the calm. And that's the hardest part of the healing process of your recovery and moving into your next chapter, really being able to know how to teach yourself to shift, right? To shift into a calm. And it's not something you guys like, I don't want you to think that this is like, where's my magic eight ball or boom, I'm going to snap my fingers. And there it is. That's not how this works. Okay. What happens is that you know how to manage it, right? And you can collapse time in your ability to be able to take yourself off that ledge, right? You, you get yourself so heightened and we like to stay up there and we're calling people and, and, you know, anyone that can help add fuel to the fire, right? That's going to make us feel better, but it doesn't, right? It's like that horse going out of control and you get to be that calming palm of your hand that puts itself in that third eye of the horse, right? You know, it, horses are all about, you know, yes, they represent speed, but they also represent calm. They're very spiritual animals. And so I invite you guys to think about how can you create calm during these tumultuous times? What are the tools that you guys have that you're using? Because if you don't have them, Okay. This is why you're in the up, down, up, down. This is why you feel like you're in that roller coaster all the time. And I'm not saying that divorce isn't a roller coaster. It is, it is a roller coaster of emotions. But what I'm saying is that when you have the right tools, when you have the right support in place is when you're really able to, to know like, Oh, okay, this is the part where I, you know, I put on my seatbelt. Oh, wait, we're coming up to the part where, okay, I put on like the overhead harness or whatever it is. And it's like, you know what to pick from. And so it's interesting because, you know, it's helped like this metaphor is very much who I am. 
and who I've become. You know, I was having lunch today with a friend and, you know, she made this comment to me. She's like, my God, she's like, how, how have you gotten into this place in such a short period of time? And, you know, what I said to her was, is that like, I did the work, I'm always doing the work. And I don't say that because I'm bragging, nor am I saying it because it's exhausting. I'm saying it because it's empowering. It is empowering to see myself shift and you know, I, I like to think of myself as, as somebody who helps women to heal their grief during divorce and that I am, I teach them how to create the calm during and after the storm so that it feels like it's long-term. And so my wish for you guys is to get to that place, right? Right. You get to get to that place. Nobody is going to hand you a silver platter to get you there. You've got to make the commitment. You've got to do the work. You've got to say, I need help. And we get so afraid to do that. And at the end of the day, the only person suffering is yourself. And so, you know, again, I could have looked at this anniversary as something negative. I could have looked at it from the lens of fear, um, you know, in one day, the two people I had relied on the most in my life were leaving me. And yes, they, they, they did physically leave. However, my ex-husband and I have now formed a different kind of a relationship that works for co-parenting our boys. And my mom, while she's not with me on this physical earth anymore, I've gotten to create a new relationship with my mom in a place where I get to still connect with her and to feel her and to hear her differently. And so I invite you guys to find that calm, to find to find the lessons in, in what is happening for you, to find the gifts, to think outside the box, to think about the gray right? What's in the gray? We live in a very black and white world. So I encourage you guys and even share it with me. I'd love to hear what is coming up for you, what it is that you're hearing in this week's episode. As always, I answer every single email that comes in. So be sure to share your feelings, your emotions, your comments, anything and everything with me. And if you are enjoying my podcast, I would appreciate you guys giving me a review. They help me to get myself seen more so that more people can get the help that they need. You can also subscribe to my podcast so that you don't miss a single episode that comes out every single week. And if you're looking for community, please join my Facebook group, The Divorce Rehab. And you can also follow me on social media where I, my handle is Divorce Rehab with Wendy um, is my social media handle. So as always, sending you guys so much love, light, and joy. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye everybody.